Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our day four of faculty development program in recent research trends on AI and ML in interdisciplinary domain. Today, we have two speeches scheduled for our participants. I would like to welcome our first speaker of the day, Dr. Abdur Rahman Sardar. He has completed his BE in Computer Science and Engineering from NIT Durgapur and completed MTech and PhD from Jadavpur University, Kolkata. Currently, he is an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Ramakrishna Mahato Government Engineering College, Purulia, West Bengal. He has authored several research papers in technical journals and referred conference proceedings. He is also the editorial board member of Journal of Security in Computer Networks and Distributed Systems. His research interests include optical networks, routing algorithms, security implementation in WSM and ad hoc network. Trust management, application of AI and ML. Welcome, sir, to our first day of this day four of FTP program. Now, I would like to give the take of this FTP to you. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you for your nice introduction. Thank you to the participants. So, without wasting my time, I want to directly I want to share my screen and I want to directly go to my talk. Is it visible? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, it thank you very much. Thank you for your confirmation. Uh, thank so you. So, my... one more thing before you start can you please do it in full screen mode? Okay. Can you please open the PPT in full screen? Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Okay, my topic is current trends in AIML and its aspects. So before I going to discuss that, let me start with a research problem. What we have tried to solve, in fact, it's the part of the research problem. And here we have tried to solve this problem using the machine learning or AIML approach. I'll discuss only that part of this problem where the AI and machine learning is involved. So here, what we have done is a data set with some device parameters are there. And from that data set, we have got a set of frequency along with the axial ratio of for some polarization converter and and from that data set we have to find predict the set of device parameters for which the performance of this device is maximum so here performance means we have to measure the performance in term, in terms of fractional bandwidth so before discussing the fractional bandwidth so just I want to explain, just I, this is the, a part of the data set, what we have taken in this data set, A, B, C, R1, R2, R3, R4, R H2, all these things are device dimensional parameters. And for, for the set of these parameters, some frequency and their axial ratio plots are there. And from that frequency and axial ratio plot, we have to find out the fractional bandwidth. And we have to predict the set of this parameter value for which the fractional bandwidth will be the maximum is our problem. So here we have considered almost 71,400 unique sets of axial ratio values. And the geometrical parameters are A, B, C, R1, R2, R3, R4, and H2. And, and for each set, each set contains 300 such combinations of these parameters and their frequency and the axial ratio. And there are 238 such sets are there. And first, so here you see first 
we have to predict this device modeling parameters so that the fractional bandwidth will be the maximum. And the, also, we have to validate the predicted parameters value by simulating that device model in the simulator. We have also got that data set from, the, from some other simulators also. But that simulator, so it will take a huge amount of time to generate this data, data sets. And so we want from we want the parameter prediction or prediction of that parameter for which the fractional bandwidth will be maximum. So you have the fractional bandwidth, just you see this one screen will be there. The fractional band, it is the frequency versus axial ratio plot is there. And the x-axis, the frequency, and y-axis, the axial ratio will be there. And this line actually, this line is the 3 dB line. And we consider only the, only the axial ratio, which are less than this 3 dB line. And the frequency, the, the fractional bandwidth will be cal calculated in this way. The center frequency will be the FL plus FH divided by 2. And the fractional bandwidth will be calculated FH minus FL divided by FC into 100. So if we calculate in this way, for this, for this picture, we have got this fractional bandwidth will be equals to 44.6. So to solve this problem, first, based what will be our approach to first, we think, think what will be the, our approach to solve this problem? And then, can we solve this problem using machine learning? Second question. And then third, if we apply the machine learning, then which models we applied? So to answer this question, then I have started to explore the IML, and I just want to share my experience with you. First, the see artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. These nowadays, these are the very common term, and almost everywhere, most. Most probably for the school students also, they will also I mean, use these type of terms. But what are these? First, you should know this artificial intelligence. What is, what is intelligence? Intelligence means it is the ability to acquire knowledge and apply that knowledge and skill. And skill is also somehow related with our experience. And then, what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence means it is the, if we can acquire and also apply that knowledge in case of machine, then it's called the artificial intelligence. Human beings are by nature have this ability to acquire knowledge and also apply that knowledge or he has the ability to take the decision where to apply that knowledge. So that's why by nature human beings are intelligent. But if this can be these types of ability should be incorporated in the machine, then we can say that machine is also an intelligent machine. Or if that type of ability can be incorporated in a program, then we can say that program is intelligent. But how to incorporate that, that study, that field of study is the artificial intelligence. So this artificial intelligence is a field of study where the machine can emulate intelligent behavior of human beings. 
in terms of computational process. So what we can or how we can think or how we can apply our knowledge or how we can acquire our knowledge and how to take decision all these things if we can incorporate in the machine and the way how to incorporate that that will be discussed in the subject of artificial intelligence second this is a branch of computer science that is concerned with the automation in intelligent behavior though here it is I have written it is a branch of computer science but nowadays it's not limited to computer science everywhere you see the there will be some application in case of the electrical engineering in case of mechanical engineering in all field of engineering artificial intelligence are it is used and third thing it is the art of creating machine that perform function that require intelligence when performed by people second thing is the where the artificial intelligence are similar or similar to human intelligence or is there any difference we want to compare that so here the an artificial intelligence versus human intelligence are compared here ai can learn from vast amount of data using algorithm and statistical model so in, in the artificial intelligence machine will only learn from the data and it will study the pattern of the data and then from that data or from some statistical calculation it will learn and that is applied in the in case of artificial intelligence but in the human intelligence human can learn from experience observation and instruction and can apply that knowledge to new situation also second ai can generate new solution based on existing pattern and data but lack of true creativity and originality it can also be generate new solution but it will be based on the existing pattern or data whatever we have supplied in the machine or during the training do i hear the but is lack of true creativity but today you see the after the invention of chat gpt some creativity means we can say that it, it also has the creativity because it can also write the story book it can also write the letter it can apply applications in somehow it can generate the new type of image also and create but nowadays artificial intelligence have the power to show the creativity also the human intelligence can create new ideas art music literature through imagination and innovation ai does not have emotion or empathy and cannot understand the emotion of others but in some human humanoid robots also we can see the means they are also emulates the human gesture and they can also show the emo emotions also but though it's not the actual emotion but it can show the that emotion now it is the human intelligence has emotional intelligence and can recognize and response the emotion of others ai yeah, is highly capable to change in input or environment and can learn quickly from new data similarly the human in, human intelligence is also adaptable to change in the environment and can learn from new experience and situation ai yeah, can make decision based on rules algorithms or data but lacks intuition and the ability to make ethical judgments but human beings have this power they can make complex decision based on the intuition experience reasoning and ethical consideration 
I can perform physical tasks with precision and speed, but lack the dexterity, strength, and flexibility of humans. Human intelligence has a wide range of physical ability, including fine motor skill, athleticism, and sensory perception. So this type of means, if we can compare the artificial intelligence and human intelligence, we, we can see this type of points, but AI are more advanced now. Next, if you see the history of artificial intelligence, and so we started from the beginning from 1950. So first, the Alan Turing developed a Turing test in 1950 to where means a conversation was done between the human and a machine to a teletator. And if the con in on the other, other hand or on the other side, if that cannot be differentiated, then we can say that that machine has passed the Turing test. And this is the first development of the artificial intelligence. And then in 1956, John McCarthy first used the term artificial intelligence in the Dartmouth conference. In, in that conference, Marvin Minsky, McCarthy, and also Shannon have used, or they have used, they have discussed how to make the machine intelligent, which can do the work like human beings. And they, and John McCarthy used or coined the term artificial intelligence. Then in 1970, first expert system was very popular. And then in 1974 to 1980, the first AI winter means in from 1956 to 1974, there will be, will be a golden period in the AI, really a huge amount of money was spent to develop the application in the AI. But after that, there will be no significant advancement or significant improvements not there in US government and also the British government reduces their fund in this research, in the AI research, and they have the decline of the interest in this field. And again, after 1980, again, after the development of natural language processor, they again, they have started to research in this. And again, from um, 1985 to 1990, again, there will be again declared, again, the interest will be declined. That is the second AI winter. And now there will be this, and during the 2011 to 2022, there will be, or, and then, or, or, or currently, there will be a boom in the AI. So there will be some significant invention will be there. In 2011, the virtual assistants, a kind of software agent that offers services that help automate and perform tasks. Those who have used the Alexa or Siri, they have the experience what the virtual assistant can do. Then in the 2016, the first humanoid robots was developed by a Hong Kong based company and it can 
guest at the human then in the 2018 google develop is bard which is a machine learning technique applied to natural language processor I mean to understand better the language we use every day that is in how the search process how the search process will be easier you can develop that in 2020 the autonomous ai developed by the american firm algotip for video surveillance of the system in the critical industries and again in 2022 the deep mind developed a ghetto the new ai system created by deep mind has the ability to complete more than 600 different tasks simultaneously for writing image description to controlling a robotics arm next some of the recent advancement or recent invention in the ai ml in april 2022 google first developed palm the software capable of generating quality text computer code solving mathematical problem etc september 2020 dal e2 create it by open ai it's a tool that allows transforming text into realistic and quality images then in after the chat gpt there will be in almost we have everybody have the experience of using the chat gpt It is now very much popular and also the google bot also the same type of gpt chat gpt which is created by the google and then adobe also developed another you know that is firefly it is it is used to generate ai to create images from text it also makes 3d models also these are some significant advancement we see the modern age but why sudden booms in the ai system because a significant improvement in the computing power and data storage capability we know that that the in the ai or ml mostly the performance of the ai or ml's model is based on the data and also the computing power so after the discovery of the gpu and also the today now huge storage cap capabilities are there and that's why it is easier to develop more ai ml application than before in the growth of the internet social media and other digital technologies has led to accumulation of vast amount of data which can be analyzed and used to train the ai model this also the another reason in advances in the ai research in the deep learning and also the advances of the natural language processing so these are the main reason for the sudden boom in the ai ml research next what is artificial intelligence and then what is explainable ai and what is generative ai so what is ai you have already explain some of what is ai that is this is the artificial intelligence refers to developing computer system can perform task or it can emulate the task human like emulate the human like intelligence it can solve the problem it can learn and understand natural language recognizing pattern and more but 
traditional FTI often operate as a black box. And so, and so what in EIS or in the ML case, and so we will give some inputs and from the output side, we can predict something. But what is to be done in the inside of the that, we don't know. So that's why it's a black box type. In the explainable AI, here in the explainable AI, it is more focused on the creating models and system that explain their decision or outputs in a way that human can understand. So here more focuses on the transparency and also how these rules or how these systems will be created it should be transparent and here the main focuses will be on the transparency and on on, on the trust worthiness and in explainable ai algorithm designed to generate explanation by highlighting the key factors or features that influence a particular decision. It is morally, morally focused on how this decision will be taken. That means the expansion on the decision it is more transparency and also it focuses on transparency, accountability, and also on the task task worthiness. And especially used, and the goal of the XAI is to increase transparency, accountability, and trust in AI system, and especially in critical domains such as healthcare, finance, and criminal justice. And XAI techniques includes methods like rule-based system, model, introspection, attention mechanism, and generating human understanding, explanation, alongside prediction. Next is the generative AI. Here, in the generative AI, here the only morally fo mostly focused on the creativity how to generate the different types of images text or music mostly popular techniques in generative AI includes the generative adversarial network or GAN it is very popular now Variational autoencoder and autoregressive model. Generative AI has application in art, content creation, data augmentation, and generating synthetic data for training AI models. For example, in the in case of security applications, also in so where in many such data should be generated means for training the machine learning, and that can be generated by using the generative AI model. Some of the, these algorithms, decision tree, AI algorithm and decision tree support vector machine, RNN transformer, all these, XAI, SAI, safely, safely additive expansion. Integrated gradients and course generative AI, variational autoencoder, auto regressive model, and transformer based model like GPT also. Next, next come to the machine learning part. So according to Mitchell, the what is the learning? 
so learning is a computer program that is said to learn from experience e with respect to some class of task p and performance measure p if its performance at task in t as measured by p improves with experience So means we can say that we can learn. So for a particular task with the experience means means if we do the same task repeatedly and we can gain the knowledge or we can then for our our performance will be improved. the repetitive doing of that task then we can say that we can learn for example here is a baby is trying to hold the ball but initially it may not catch the ball properly but after trying some times of uh, trying some times means after gaining some experience how to grab the ball he may grab the ball correctly so what is in the machine learning it is also the subset of the artificial intelligence that automatically enables a machine or system to learn and improve from experience instead of explicit programming machine learning uses algorithm to analyze large amount of data learn from the insights and then make informed decision so means so from a large amount of data will be there and so be given and, and then from that set of data it will learn what should be no it can predict something means means suppose we have the data for one week data one week weather data is there and we have to predict whether the tomorrow will be, there will be a raining or not so from this set of data the machine can train or it can learn a pattern and then it will guess or it it can predict whether the tomorrow will be there will be a rain or not then again the machine learning this machine learning can be classified into some groups there is supervised learning and supervised learning semi supervised learning and reinforcement learning in the supervised learning the data will be mostly the data will be labeled and learning will be done in presence of some supervisor that means we have given a basket of fruits will be there and there it will be labeled that what is banana what is apple and then any a fruits a banana will be given and if it is asked what is this then it it he can correctly identify that this is the banana that means here the supervised learning will be there what we can and we can apply this in our childhood also when we learn the learn the alphabets only mostly this these are the regression and the classif classification are in this category of the supervised learning then unsupervised learning only here no label data will be there machine will learn from some pattern or from some features and 
end and here the me, the clustering algorithm are in this category of this learning here that means a basket baskets of some fruits will be given but we don't know exactly what is the name of that fruit and from that basket we can differentiate the different types of fruits in the same category so this is the unsupervised learning and in the semi supervised learning where it is combination of both supervised and the unsupervised learning here a small part of the data is labeled and the large part of the data are unlabeled and we have to take the decision or we have to predict the data it is in similarly similar we have to predict the data similar to supervised learning and reinforcement learning it is it is the feedback based learning or the reward based learning in for the for each correct in it's for each correct movement will get one reward and for it small it for for incorrect movement will have a penalty so that means here the machine will learn from from the reward or penalty then how the ai ml are related we have seen that this artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning these are they are the artificial the superset is the artificial intelligence and then machine learning is the subset of artificial intelligence and deep learning is also the subset of the machine learning then how these ai and machine learnings differ they are the different AI allows the machine to simulate the human intelligence to solve the problem, whereas the ML allows machine to learn autonomously from past data. AI is more vast than the machine learning, so it the goal is to develop an intelligent system that can perform complex tasks here the goal is to build machine that can learn from data to increase the accuracy of the output we build system that can solve complex tasks like human we train machine with data to perform specific tasks and deliver accurate result mostly the prediction classification are within this category ai has a wide scope of application machine learning has a limited scope of application ai uses technology in a system so that it mimics human decision making whereas the ml uses self learning algorithm to produce predictive model ai works with all types of data it is structured semi structured or non structured data but ml can only use the structured and semi structured data ai system is a logic and decision tree to learn reason and self correct machine learning system relies on statistical model to learn and can self correct when provided with new data Now, what are the research challenges in the AI ML? Mainly, the AI ML systems are mainly based on the data. So here, the data will play a crucial role in the AI ML system. So if the data is correct, then your machine can give the correct prediction or correct result. So if the data is biased, 
then it may not be the correct answer. So the data here, the data is playing a crucial role in the AIML. First, data quality and also the quantity is also very important. In machine learning algorithm, heavily rely on the data for training. So the quality, relevance, and the sufficiency of data remains a significant challenge. And also in some data, the in in some data, the noise may also arise. So we have to filter that noise also. Otherwise, during the training, in, may create some problem and we can get the wrong output. Bias and fairness. AI system can inherit biases present in the data when they are trained, leading to unfair outcomes, particularly for mar marginalized group. So that means bias, bias this data may always give you the wrong output so you have you have to look into that matter resource efficiency any of the ml models require significant computational resource and memory so real time in the real time applications also means this resource efficiency is also very much important nowadays. GPU and uh, and also main any cloud platforms are there. You can have, we can use them, their GPUs also, and so AIML yeah, research are more easier nowadays. Then robustness and adversarial attack. ML models are vulnerable to adversarial attack, and particularly in case of a healthcare system where the data is very important in that case also. If the data is not correct, from then may get a major mistake may, may be offered. Continual learning and lifelong adoption. In most of the ML models, are means model when they are trained they will be given the training data and they will be trained and after that means their lifelong adapt adaptation is not there and there is a huge research challenge so means means during the applications also there there may be the critical situation may be arised and there is means nowadays it's also a research problem is how to challenge how to overcome that challenge means during the during using phases human ai collaboration as ai system becomes more capable there is a need to explore how human and machine can effectively collaborate to solve complex problem and scalability and efficiency so many aiml algorithm particularly in case of deep learning algorithm requires massive amount of computational resource and data so scaling this algorithm to large data set and distributed computing environment while maintaining efficiency is a significant research challenge. Now we see the artificial intelligence and machine learning has the a, a vast amount of applications are there in different domain, particularly in case of a healthcare domain. So in the in in healthcare doing this med medical in the medical image diagnosis in drug discovery personalized medicine electronic health records clinical trials outbreak prediction all means here 
actually this healthcare is also a is vast area and here we have the which potential of research in this area so here the analysis of medical imaging and diagnostic so like the analysis of the x-ray mri ct scan and also the ppg signals also we can analyze that data and that signal captured by that that device and we can also predict the different types of diseases also and predictive analytics and early de disease detection so in this area there is a new scope of research is that there in this area means nowadays you know that the electronic means some wearable devices are there which can continuously monitor our body and it can predict the or it can if it can detect the disease earlier then it will be more easier in the personalized medicine so means in, in normal life or when the doctor will prescribe us they they will know they will actually prescribe some medicine but the effect on of that medicine is not always analyzed correctly whether there will be some uh, allergic effect will be there or is there any other side effects will be there that is not always analyzed so it will be better if the that data will be analyzed and then we prescribe the medicine medicine correctly virtual health assistant and chatbots means ai powered virtual assistant and chatbots are being popular nowadays and most of the patient communicates and appointment scheduling providing basic healthcare information they can use this type of chatbots also so remote remote patient monitoring healthcare operation optimization so these are so many applications will be there in the healthcare and also we have a huge amount of applications in the agriculture also and in our country the production production of the food is not a problem but storing of that food or or mainly wasting wasting of that crops is a huge problem in our country if we can suggest some ai application in that area then it will be very much useful and also another problem is there so farmers are also they are also producing the crops without knowing the actual market price they if if there will be the some analysis mechanism will be there or they have given some analytical mechanism or apps to which they can analyze the what will be the market price at that time when these crops will be produced and it will be better this are the some area where the aml can be used the monitoring the soil health crop disease detection and crop maturity weather and price forecasting then also a 
vast applications are there in the education field also in pharmaceutical industry in construction sector in energy sector so in the, almost in all sectors nowadays the aiml can be used so some other application or a yeah, application in some other domain that is in the astronomy also it helps in solving complex calculation for prediction AI gaming also so many AI games are now popular in finance also we can use the AI in cyber security also today it's a there is a means i think you have the hard the term deep fake and aiml ai it can be also used in transport or in travel in automotive industry robotics entertainment e-commerce and even in our in our judiciary system also ai can be used so in our country more than 3 course cases are pending in different courts of india so if if some ai or ml applications can be made to ease this task then it will be very very useful for our country and now in our supreme court of india has used they have launched one ai application that is subhash which is a ai ai powered translation tool supreme court vidik anubad software which can translate the legal documents in diff, different in different languages almost 22 languages are supported by that application okay this is my first part okay and and again means again go back to my first problem means where go back to my first research problem may there we have used the regression analysis is used and what is the regression so here in the regression analysis we develop a statistical model that can predict the values of dependent or response variable based upon the val values of independent or explanatory variable that means we have y equals to fx y equals to x so it where x is the dependent variable and y is the where x x x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable okay but here we don't have this function so we have only the data sets will be there and we have to we have to develop a system which can predict the values of y or some x so a statistical model that utilizes one quantitative independent variable x to predict the quantitative dependent variable y simple regression in so where y will be fx so one def one dependent variable will be there in the multiple regression there will be more than one 
dependent variable will be there so y will be the f of x1 x2 like that So let us take one example. Here the so here the in this example taken from some book, that is the number of components of a vehicle and in the Y it is the repair time. And if we the put is or if, if we plot this in a graph, then it will be look like this. And then how do we, how we can, so from this graph, how we can say that, and so how they are related, this, how y is related with the x. So means we can draw a line which can satisfy the maximum point, we can say that that will be our baseline. So here, suppose y will be equals to, or here it will be beta 0 plus beta 1 x. This is, this is a equation of a straight line. So where the infinite number possibilities of beta 0 and beta 1 will be there. That means for infinite number of beta 0 and beta combinations of beta 0 and beta 1, we can draw different lines in here. But which lines will be the best line? So here, so in some in MATLAB, we have got a plot this, and again we draw the regression line using the MATLAB, and it is giving this regression uh, equation that is y will be equals to 15.2x plus 7.711 that means the beta 0 will be the 7.711 and the 15.2 but how to get this value so to estimate this value suppose y y i is our observed value and y i hat is the predict all the hypothesized value it's called the hypothesized value then yi minus y hat this will be our error and which line will be the baseline if the error will be the minimum then we can say that this will be the baseline so we can we can measure the error in the sum squared residuals. So we can calculate that. And it is the least square estimation. And then the u will be the, so we can find out the summation of the all least square. And if this summation is minimum, then we can say that that line is the baseline. So if we differentiate, partially differentiate E with respect to beta zero and beta one, then and we can compare with the value zero, then we can find out the beta zero and beta one. So, and it can also be calculated in this way also s x x b x i minus x bar and s y y and s x y and then beta 1 will be the s x y divided by s x x and beta 0 will be equals to this and in this way, again, we solve this, we can get these two values. 
and this will be our prediction line. Some other calculations are there also. So in the data set, whatever we have already seen, in the past part, if we plot that, it will be look like this means, and you can draw a connecting line. Then, by your intuition, this line is not the correct fit. This line is not the correct fit. This is much better than this. This one is the much better. And this one is much better. Then which one will be the better fit? We can check it by their R square value, which we can see from the MATLAB. If the R square value is nearly equals to one, that means it is, it is means if the R square value approaches to one, means it is it is fit correctly. If it approaches to zero, that means the data there is this, there will be no relation of this data will be more scattered. So here, so to this point means first what we can we have what we have to do to solve this problem in in this problem we have seen that there will be two each set contain 300 such parameters combinations of parameters their frequency and also their frequency and axial ratio plot will be there and from that and we can find out the FBW that is the fractional bandwidth and 238 such fractional bandwidth will be there because of the 238 sets are there. And again, we have we have plot plot the fractional band bandwidth versus the parameter FBW versus the parameter and we have seen that in which point this this will get the maximum for which for which values of A it is giving the maximum value and then we take it generates some points nearly to that point and then we have applied nonlinear regression and from that nonlinear regression again we have to get the precise values of the parameter we Again, get the maximum point from that regression point where the x where that value cut the x axis. And in this way, we can find out all these parameter values. And after that, we put that parameter value in a machine learning model and we get the optimized values. Okay. There are so many research scopes. So thank you.
thank you sir for your speech this was a wonderful session